Thank you, Chairman Tonko. Today, we continue this committee's important work on environmental justice as we examine 11 bills that address the pressing needs of environmental justice communities. And for far too long, low-income communities and communities of color have borne the brunt of air pollution, exposure to contaminated sites and unsafe water. Environmental injustice can be attributed to many things, from intentionally racist policies like redlining that lead to vulnerable communities being excluded from siting and permitting decisions to unequal investment in these communities and climate change and deteriorating infrastructure are exacerbating these problems and this inequality. So it's time for Congress to act, as Chairman Tonko said, we must address the overlapping crisis facing our nation, including inequality, climate change, and the economic downturn caused by this pandemic. And as President Biden has said, we need to build back better and that means building back cleaner, healthier, and with greater equity. So I believe the 11 bills before us today can help us do exactly that. One of the bills is H.R. 1512, the Clean Future Act, which I introduced last month with Chairman Tonko and Rush and several other committee members. And the Clean Future Act is a comprehensive and ambitious plan to combat the climate crisis and achieve net zero greenhouse gas pollution by no later than 2050. And environmental justice is a key component of the Clean Future Act and must be a focus of our efforts to address climate change and infrastructure. But many of the environmental justice provisions in the Clean Future Act are reflected in President Biden's American Jobs Plan. Both proposals prioritize investments for environmental justice communities and basically commit 40% of investments to directly benefiting these communities. And both proposals seek to clean up the sectors of our economy, like the ports, that not only increase the amount of carbon in the atmosphere, but also add to the amount of hazardous air pollutants concentrated in environmental justice communities. And both policy proposals make the long overdue investments in cleaning up Superfund sites, replacing lead service lines, and updating the energy grid. Now, the other bills we're going to hear about today focus on important environmental justice topics, including climate justice, port climate readiness, cumulative impacts assessments, and the tools available to identify environmental justice communities. And many of these bills align with the American Jobs Plan and can help us make that plan a reality. So I wanna thank my colleagues for their engagement and help in refining and expanding the environmental justice provisions of the Clean Future Act. And I also commend them, commend them for their leadership on the other bills that we're developing or that we're discussing today. All these bills reflect thoughtful stakeholder engagement with communities of color and low-income communities, and I'm proud to continue that engagement uh, with today's hearings. But I also want to thank our witnesses who are leaders and experts in environmental justice communities. We're fortunate to have this panel with us today, and I hope we can have a constructive dialogue and work with these stakeholders to enact needed change. But let me just emphasize, if I can, uh, Chairman Tonko, that environmental justice can and should be a bipartisan issue. Many of us were excited to pass environmental justice provisions out of the House as part of last year's energy bill. And although we did get about half of that energy bill in the final omnibus, uh, we were disappointed because we couldn't find the bipartisan support we needed to get the environmental justice provisions included in that omnibus bill. So I hope we can find common ground and build on support. Because I know that these problems that exist in environmental justice communities, you know, are, are throughout the country, not just in, in democratic districts. In fact, I always point out that when we did a Brownfields uh, bill, uh, I don't know, 20 years ago now, it was with uh, Congressman Gilmore and it was with, it was when um, um, my former governor uh, Whitman was, uh, the EPA administrator and and, uh, and and George Bush was president. So there's no reason that this can't be bipartisan. And and also this the notion of building back better does require bold action and a focus on the communities most in need. So I think the bills before us today are a good start. I thank uh, Chairman Tonko for calling this important hearing and, and look forward to working together to see environmental justice provisions enacted into law. And with that, I'll yield back. Thank you, Chairman.